a patch note dropped and of course there are good things there are bad things and i am here to talk about best things that we saw in the patch let's go number one is the unique item a havarian spear this is an endgame uber unique staff in tier 4 and its effect is super fun and i think in most cases fun has to triumph over any other aspects or at least it's like that for us this staff lets you gain a random shrine effect for 10 to 20 seconds after killing an elite I can already imagine being surrounded by a bunch of enemies then suddenly popping the lightning ball of death and powering through them or if you're just going through a dungeon and randomly popping off artillery. There is no shrine effect that isn't fun. Plus, they're even buffing the greed shrine effect this patch. So in essence, buffing this staff before it's even released. I think having something to look forward to in endgame is something that can help the survivability of any game. And so this is definitely an awesome addition. Next is the Necromancer's unique shield, the Lidless Wall. Lucky hit, while you have an active bone storm, hitting an enemy outside of a bone storm has up to a 5-25% to chance to spawn an additional bone storm. Now each of your active sacrifice bonuses increases this chance by 25%. That in itself is basically a guaranteed bone storm. It's nice to see that a shield is getting this much love. And on a necromancer out of all the roles. I feel like a lot of people will be playing Necro this season and a lot of different things on the entire patch are pointing right to that. And to me personally, this item alone is actually enough reason for me to at least try out the class. Another thing we're excited about is the utility aspect called Audacity. When there are at least 5 close enemies, it stuns them for 2 to 4 seconds and this is only a 20 second cooldown. It's literally a free stun. Who doesn't want that? Definitely seeing this in my personal Earth Pulverized Druid build. A perfect combo for the aspect that gives tectonic spikes to my Pulverize whenever I cast it. Now let's get back to Necromancers. There is a new offensive aspect called Gore Quills. Bloodlands will consume blood orbs to also conjure lances from them. Each additional lance deals 20 to 50% damage and prioritizes targeting unlanced enemies. If there's one thing I've learned about Bloodlands builds is that you can never have enough blood lances. So having yet another way to generate more lances is always a positive thing. Or a positive thing, just like my Necromancer's blood type. This is, by the way, the other reason why I said it feels like this season is for the Necromancer. Now, a lot of you say that the game feels a little too easy, especially when powering through with your buddies. I have a great news for you. Monster HP scaling is now increased from 85% to 100% per extra player in the party. That's right, per extra player. Essentially, with this, having more players on the team should lead to a more challenging and hopefully a more satisfying playthrough. For the miscellaneous, let's talk about it at the same time because all of them are really cool next to each other. And basically, they adjusted the scaling of Greed Shines to improve its effectivity or its effectiveness throughout the game. Game, which is awesome because now you're probably not just gonna get 20s or 40s because like it feels nice that you're getting a lot of gold but then when you look at the value it feels kind of underwhelming so hopefully with this it's gonna be more fun to have that greed shrine with you now then world bosses now drop potions more often i don't know if this is um, positive or negative for you but for me this is um awesome because a lot of people are casual or at least a lot of my friends are casual and they seem to have a little bit of difficulty trying to survive through world bosses so having just a little extra potion could make player experience for them a lot better there is no longer a limit as well for how many materials you can refine into higher materials which is awesome because i swear having just 20 materials as maximum for you when crafting feels insanely slow i had to recraft about five times just to get that 100 that i need and that is no longer an issue so basically these are quality of life stuff that generally helps out a majority of the people that i play with so it's really really awesome we like these changes now next is and this is going to be a two-parter is barrier generation can now appear for all classes it will also begin to drop later in the game which is really awesome anything that gives you barrier for any class i feel is amazing to me personally as a druid i love having that barrier and i played with a friend of mine who was a rogue and we discussed how it would be really really nice if he could just generate barriers for himself as well just to increase that survivability based on his play style so i think it's really awesome that now more classes or basically all classes have the option of barrier generation within their items. 
And now as a second part to that, lucky hit chance while you have a barrier can now appear for all classes as well. Reduced by 12% when, uh, when on Helm and 20% when on an Amulet. Yes, but that's alright because now lucky hit chance can increase when you have a barrier and it's gonna be available for all of the classes again adding another layer another depth for um build customization for a lot of different players so i think just having more customization options for generally everyone is gonna be entirely better for everybody's experience and that is everything we wanted to share with you in the patch notes. And of course, there are other awesome things there. So let us know in the comments what you're looking forward to in Season 1. Now, until the next video, have a wonderful day.